My own research, which has been in developing areas like electronic commerce, shows how the law has to respond to the changing environment. That's what I want my students to see. So one of the things I, I try and do with my students as soon as they get in the building is to make them realize that where lawyers make a living is not in the absolute. It's where the answers aren't clear that lawyers really make most of their living. Uh, scholarship and teaching go hand in glove here. That's the way it's supposed to work. You're out in your field sharpening your skills, creating new ideas, and you bring that into the classroom so the students aren't just getting the cases that were decided 20 years ago. They're getting your analysis, your input from the frontiers of scholarship today. The question to you, sir, is why is it that so many presidents have risked so much to try to implement universal health care? Well, it's a fascinating story how this has played out over a hundred years. Uh, at first, it was a call in the wild from Teddy Roosevelt, and then Franklin really wanted to pursue it, but it was so emotional. There's something about health care that's so emotional. And my students are very happy to learn that they're seeing the theory of practice of law combining in some particular way with how law works in the real world. So, in the context of the Trayvon Martin verdict, which angered many in the African-American community, are these attacks payback? Look at the storylines um, that have pitched, and I've really had an opportunity to read all the stories. Not at one time or at any moment was there any mention that this is payback for Trayvon no, Martin. No, that's true. Uh, I've brought students into those cases on a regular basis because it's an opportunity for students to get the experience of seeing what these cases are about, seeing what social justice advocacy as a lawyer is about. Is Roe a sufficient decision for us to, to continue to rest reproductive rights on? What Roe had promised, but the problem was it was cut back in Casey in 1992 because Casey allowed, Casey was the Supreme Court case that allowed a lot more restrictions from the state. It was basically the Supreme Court saying that you can do things that are burdensome on women's rights as long as they're not unduly burdensome. And ever since Casey... We've had the opportunity really to attract at both the senior and junior uh, levels just fantastic faculty. Um, and shame on us if we don't hire the best. <laughs>